Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a local Windows machine with its own GPU as a workstation to do fine tuning for large language models. Uh, now, you know, should you do this? Um, that's a good question because uh, most people probably use cloud-based GPUs for doing uh, fine-tuned training and absolutely um, that is a, a more scalable way than using your own machines. Uh, but there's some scenarios where this might actually make sense. Uh, one would be if you want to just do experimentation locally and, and not really put it in the cloud or you don't want to put your training data into the cloud which in a lot of cases you wouldn't want to um, and, and other scenarios would be where you're completely offline so if you need to do uh, training or, or want to do some experimentation with training or GPUs uh, on an airplane or in an airport terminal while you're waiting um, it might make sense to be able to do that on your on your laptop um, and, and there are many laptops now that have GPUs that absolutely can do training of quantized models, or at least fine-tuned training of quantized models. So that's what this video is really about, is to show you how to set this up. Again, you know, should you set it up? Well, it depends on your scenario, but um, but you absolutely can do it, probably, if, if you have a decently um, equipped computer. Um, and I'm going to go through and do this on Windows. Um, I'll use um, Windows Subsystem for Linux because um, fine tuning is really kind of geared toward using Linux. But with WSL, we can actually put a Linux kernel alongside the Windows kernel and go ahead and um, and do a lot of training that way. So, so that's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to bring up my Windows machine and kind of walk through this process from start to end. Um, the uh, the steps basically we want to install a Windows Subsystem for Linux. Um, then we want to install um, um, some Python components. We will need to have a C++ compiler installed because some of the uh, fine-tuning libraries actually compile binaries as, as they're pip installed. So we'll install that. It's very easy. Don't worry about it. Um, you won't have to actually do any C programming. It's just having the compiler there. Um, then we'll configure um, ver uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code with some components so that it can work on projects on the Linux side of things. And then to kind of finalize it, we'll, we'll go through and fine tune a model using um, Unsloth, which is a very memory and GPU intensive or um, non intensive uh, tool set. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and, and use that. So, so let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, get onto my machine and I'm going to run a PowerShell prompt. Um, so let me make the font a little bigger so we can see it. And the first thing we need to do is get um, Substance for Linux installed. And so I'm just listing what distros are available to me within this feature. I'm going to use um, Ubuntu, the most recent one, which is 2404 when I recorded this. And so it's pretty easy. Um, WSL install D Ubuntu 24.04. Now you can do this from a GUI within the settings in Windows, but it's pretty easy to do from the command line. So as we run that, um, what has to happen next is that the subsystem gets downloaded and installed from uh, Microsoft site. Then it downloads a uh, uh, Ubuntu distribution and installs that. This does take a while. I'm going to speed this up so that you don't have to watch, you know, 20 minutes of progress bars. But, um, but it's, it's pretty much fire and forget. And when it's done, we'll have a Linux kernel installed. Um, we'll be asked for a, a root password and, um, and we'll put that in. And then from that point, we can just kind of like bail over to a Linux terminal prompt whenever we want to. So we'll let this run. And this took a lot longer, you know, in real time, but um, I'm not gonna make you watch all that. So we do need, to, and on this machine, it's never been installed before. I need to reboot Windows. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that by hand with the shutdown command. Again, from the command line, you could do that from the GUI, but I'll just do it this way. So I won't be able to record the machine rebooting, obviously, but then once it does reboot, we'll see that it'll it'll restart the, um, the Ubuntu uh, command line, which is the uh, WSL command line, and it, it's just asking for a root password. This isn't the uh, admin password on the Windows side. This is strictly for the, the Linux kernel. So this looks pretty good. Um, maybe we'll just kind of like see if, yep, this does look like a Linux kernel, so that looks fine. And then I'm gonna close this window and sort of re enter the Linux environment from scratch just so you can see what that's like. So from PowerShell, you can also do this from command terminal, um, just WSL. We'll uh, branch over to a uh, Linux uh, prompt and then and then just, you know, if you install an operating system, Windows or Linux or whatever, first thing you do is get it all updated. So we're going to go through that process of checking for updates and then um, we'll see which updates 
are actually available and there's a bunch of them so we'll go ahead and, and, and up, apply those. So this will patch any of the uh, Linux packages that are installed. Um, it only takes you know less than a minute so it's pretty quick. Now that's done, so that looks fine. Just double check, there's nothing left, everything's done. And now we'll go ahead and um, start installing a few components. So we want to install pip, um, which we'll use within notebooks and from the command line. So that's our um, Python package manager, essentially. So we'll install that. Um, after that installs, we'll also kind of just run a quick check and make sure that it's really there. So. We'll just check the version of pip. Pip for, well, it's obviously there, but let's spell that right. So we do have pip, so that's good. So the next thing we want to do is I think install the um, C compiler. Um, so this is good. It's going to install the new C compiler, and it's again, it's you'll never use it. I mean, well, you might never use it. You probably don't need it, except that when um, Python packages are installed, sometimes they build. Um, native object code so this just needs to be be there in the background somewhere so we'll check that again g plus was version okay that's installed looks good and let's see what do we do next so next i think we'll install the um uh, conda and i'm going to use mini conda um, you could use other packet or other uh, environment managers for python but i like using conda mini conda is plenty um, the command line version um, you can use anaconda if you want to but I'm just going to use Miniconda, and there's just a few long commands to install this. You can get these on the Miniconda website. Um, so we'll install that, and that looks pretty good. So we've kind of downloaded an installation script and uh, and then ran it. And then in order to get the uh, Conda into the um, into the uh, environment, we're, we'll just need to uh, go ahead and, and, and add it to the path. And we're running bash. Okay, that makes sense. So the command that we'll run is um, uh, conda init. I'll just copy this so I don't have to type all that stuff. There we go. And then that added it to bash rc. So we'll just cat bash rc and just read it, make sure it's really there. I'm sure it is. Yep, I can see the kind of stuff. So that all looks great. So let's kind of go back to the beginning and we'll have to restart the WSL prompt in order to pick up those bash changes. And there are other ways to do it, but that was that's pretty easy. And then we've got everything installed at this point. So we can just make a repo and then go into Visual Studio Code and start working with it. Um, but that's of course that's not going to work because I didn't install code yet. So let's go to the Microsoft Store, and I wanted to point this out because we're not, you know, that we have a hint back here of how to install Visual Studio Code for Linux, but we actually are going to just going to use the Windows version. So Windows has some extensions that we can use the Windows version of code under the Windows GUI and still do Linux development in the um, WSL environment. So let's go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. Should just take a minute. That's installed. Okay, yeah, that's good. So let's just go back and run code. And I'm just gonna put the extensions that we're gonna use in here now before we actually start doing the Linux development. So all color scheme, all dark scheme, of course. And yeah, I think we're yeah, I think we're done. We're we'll put extensions in, but we'll put them in ourselves. So okay, so next step is um, go find the extensions, and the extension we want is um, WSL, um, conveniently named. So we'll go ahead and install that. And essentially this makes Visual Studio Code kind of aware of that uh, Linux environment so that we can make a, a, a Linux folder, the current folder for a project. So um, pretty easy and we'll install Python while we're here. Um, now this will be the Python um, for really the Windows side. So and that's one thing to know about sort of this how this all works is is when you're in the WSL prompt you're in Linux and you know if you have software installed for Windows you can't run it here or vice versa so okay so next thing um, we're gonna create a kind of environment to run this in um, we're gonna use Python 310 
that looks good. And this will create a, um, a training environment with some basic packages. We'll activate that, so kind of activate fine tuning. That's good. And now hopefully we can start doing some development. Um, so okay, so I'm gonna just you know pause here for a second. The um, so what I have on, up on the screen is uh, Unsloth. So Unsloth is a, a, a company that makes uh, tool chains and they have hosted environments for fine tuning, but uh, their libraries are free to use. So they, they put together some tool chains that are, are really easy to use. And um, particularly for local GPU use, um, they're pretty light on the need for resources. So you can actually do quite a bit. Um, with Unsloth. Now there are a lot of other tool chains and certainly the environment we've set up can run a lot of the other ones as well, but that's why I chose this one. Um, and what I have on the right is their installation instructions of how to install uh, dependencies to run their tool chain on just a bare metal machine, which is what we're starting with. So what we're gonna do is essentially go through their installation instructions, um, including down below there's um, there's some smoke test training that we're gonna do. Um, just just not to you know this video really isn't about you know why we do training and, and designing some training but but just the, the mechanics of making it work on a windows machine so uh, so let's go ahead and continue so um so we're we have the fine-tuning environment uh, active we're going to install the dependencies that they call for um, i'm going to use the cuda 12.1 libraries i have a pretty recent um, gpu in here and um, make sure to put the kind of command in Okay, and so this is going to install all these these libraries, um, and one of these is actually going to need that C++ compiler, so that's that's why we installed that. So we'll let this run. It will take a little while to finish up, so I'll probably speed the video up so you don't have to watch every step. And I think specifically PyTorch um, is going to do some compiling, so it's going to. It's going to be on 99% for a while, but um, but we're not going to wait through that. We'll we'll just kind of speed forward in the timeline to get there. Okay, so PyTorch is done um, and everything's done, so we can kind of see that um, that we're we're done. There are no errors. That's good. We'll grab the next command, which is to pip install some of the unsloth libraries. And this won't take as long because it's just downloading some Python code. And let that run, run. And so it's successfully built on Sloth. That's great. So no errors so far. So far, so good. And back to the command line. And then one more thing we need to do, sort of at the command line, to prep this uh, fine-tuning environment. Um, and that's installing uh, path to accelerate bits and bytes. So these are fine-tuning libraries. OK, so that all looks good. Uh, code is installed, should be in the path. Great, so we can launch that from the command line. And if you notice, right at the bottom of the screen, um, we can see that there's a um, Ubuntu 24.04 WSL. So it's kind of telling us that um, Visual Studio Code knows that it is running in an Ubuntu environment, in a Linux environment, and that's the kind of project we're working on. So as it you know executes things, it's going to execute them in the WSL. And, and you can actually see that just based on the terminal that's below. It started a WSL terminal, not um, a Windows terminal. So everything's working really well. So the next thing we're going to do is um, go through here and um, and just do some fine tuning. Um, I'm not, you know, again, we're not trying to do good fine tuning or fine tune something for a particular use case. We're just going to make sure all these dependencies work and we can create a fine tuning adapter um, on top of, we're going to use the Llama 3 uh, model on this machine. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's um, just print something, make sure that we can run uh, we can run some code in here. And hello. Oh yeah, it's gonna be look at again. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna put the imports in first just to make sure that um, that all the the uh, kind of installs and pip installs we did at the command line actually prepared the environment. And if it didn't, if anything was wrong, we we would very quickly get some some errors here. But this all looks good. And then we'll just, um, rather than, we could take that entire um, notebook cell from their documentation and paste it in, but we'll do kind of a little bit, bit by bit, just so we can make sure it's all here. So I think the next thing we'll do is take like everything except for the actual training. So we'll stop just before the, um, the uh, fine tuning training, 
but all the preparatory, you know, download model, download data, um, set up hyperparameters, and we'll run that. And you will actually see that this will take a while because it has to download the LLM. So I didn't pre-download a Llama 3. Um, so it's downloading a version of Llama 3 and, you know, data files, but the data files are small. So mostly kind of all that. And you can you can kind of see the Ethernet usage on the... Um, over on the right was was pretty high and I did speed that up so we didn't have to watch the whole thing so now the really important part is the actual training so we'll grab trainer.train and that will actually um, when we execute that that's going to um, go onto the GPU and actually do the training and we can kind of look what we have in this environment so this is uh, uh, an NVIDIA 4090 we have 24 gig of RAM um, we're using about 12 of that so you could you know 11.6 of uh, GPU memory so you know if you had a 12 gig GPU you'd probably fine doing this and um, and we're you know definitely um, hitting it you know pretty hard we were almost 100% on GPU and did speed the training up so we didn't have to wait for the whole thing it took about a minute so um, so it did take about a minute for training it took about a minute for the downloading model piece up above I sped both of those up too so the video wasn't too long so now what we'll do is we'll do an inference on the um, on the uh, fine-tuned model so um, we have this uh, uh, for inference function we're gonna call um, we actually it, it calls for this alpaca prompt so I need to grab that from their notebook too and then once we run those two cells um, what what we'll do is we'll, we'll actually be inferring we'll be doing running an inference against our uh, model that has our um, adapter on it and um, and this is you know it's Fibonacci it probably could have done that before but we're just kind of testing testing it with a smoke test to make sure that it actually works. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is save the fine tune adapter to my local file system so that you can kind of see, you know, what's the product of all of this is to get fine tuning parameters that we can combine with the model in the future. And if we look at the file system right now, we have nothing there. And then once we run this, we'll save the, um, the adapter from memory out into the file system. And these are the, these are the files we would pull in if we wanted to do inference um, with the fine-tuned model in the future. So that's pretty much the process. Um, everything you know worked. Um, there, there's a few steps, but once the things are set up, um, it pretty much uh, works the way you would expect. And, uh, and I, everything that I did here now, as long as I had downloaded the data first and the, mo and the, the model that's being fine-tuned first, um, I could do training you know, anywhere. Um, I, uh, I wouldn't have to upload my data onto a cloud system that perhaps I didn't trust 100%. Um, and, uh, and I wouldn't also, you know, I wouldn't have to pay, you know, per second that I'm using some, you know, a cloud GPU. On the other hand, um, you know, renting, you can rent a lot of GPU in the cloud for the cost of, you know, even a, a consumer, you know, 4090 GPU. So, uh, so it's, you know, it might be cost effective, might not be, but it's an option. And if you wanted to do this kind of thing, that's how you do it. Um, so I hope uh, that was uh, useful, or at least you learned something. I'll see you next time.